If you practice the things that we'll be teaching during the course of this conference, you will bring God into your space. There's a life I live. God is everywhere in it. It's everywhere in it. And then you'll discover that God doesn't fragment people's lives. Just like we say, your marital life, your business life, your career life. We, 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 human beings did that. Fragmented. God deals with you as a whole. If he encounters you, it, it trickles through every aspect of your being. There's no dealing. There's no... It won't, Use his binoculars to be looking at, okay, your financial life is defective. So let's fix that aspect. And then, then, then your marital life will start leaking. He's not a plumber. So we, we made up all of that uh, because that's how we think. So we believe that's how God thinks. Uh, the way God intended it is that as you walk with the Holy Spirit, you begin to see sufficiency build, built into defective aspects of your life. And it's not as if God was focusing on that aspect as it were, but God was just taking you through a journey. And then you find that you, in your own experience, now you say, oh, man. I have a breakthrough in this area. That's your own testimony. But what God is doing is that he's administering sufficiency. That's what he's doing. Now, listen. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. The Bible says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man. I don't have time this morning to tell you about the things of a man, the things of men. But the Bible says that your spirit man knows all the things about you. It means your reality your capacity, your tensile strength, your tensile strain, what you can take, what you cannot take, what you can survive, what you cannot survive, the temptations you can succeed in, the temptations you cannot succeed in, and all of your ratings and all of your possibilities and everything is calibrated upon your spirit man. So all the Lord needs to do is just look at your spirit, okay? It's 4.2. That means you can't fast for more than five days. It's calibrated. The things of man, yeah, your spirit knows it. Right? In the same way, the Bible says, even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. It means that the things of God are calibrated on the Spirit of God. In fact, even the depths of God, fully calibrated. That's the arrangement. And because the realities of God and the depths of God, the capacities of God, all calibrated on the Spirit of God, he knows everything about God. That's how it works. If you are not experiencing those kind of organic realities, you are not well spiritually. You have an ailment. And I will, I will prescribe to you a few drugs, but much more, I will prescribe the location of the clinic, Jesus Clinic. The, the, go to the Department of Grace, take a drip, put it on your vein, and remain there. The doctor will come soon. You are desperately in need of clinical help if he has not been coming to summon you. If the song of the Spirit doesn't come to you, not, you, are, you have never summoned, you are, you are not given burdens to pray about, and you are not asked to give. I will prescribe the address of the hospital. The, the nurses are busy. So when you, when you get in, admit yourself and <laughs> put, uh, put a, snap your hand on a drip quickly. Because once you lose that consciousness, it's a consciousness. Oh, you don't know. It's a consciousness. I told you that the proof of life is consciousness. The proof, Jesus' explanation of your being born again experience in John chapter 3 verse 3 is very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's perception. That is the proof that you are saved is that you have perception, consciousness. If you lose that perception, you will walk in a dry land without the help of this administrator. Maybe you are in a dry land now. Because you lost that consciousness a long time ago. Oh, he will just, he will just feel it like this. Fast, fast. As you open that fridge, there's yogurt, there's all. The, the, the thing will just pass. Fast. It will pass. It will come only once. Then no, it's okay. You close the fridge. You say, mm. Okay. Because the, the evidence that you are a son of God is that you can be led by the Spirit of God. And leading doesn't start with knowing who to marry. Mm. If you have not been led on other matters, you will marry wrong, thinking the voice you heard. I, I hope you know that you can, God can answer you according to your idols. Yeah. Ah. Ah. That's when you want leading, when you want to marry. Meanwhile, on other issues, on how to use your stomach, you don't need leading. You know you must have beans by 4 o'clock. <laughs> I must have beans. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm punching you hard because I want, I, want, I want something to happen. Don't be offended. I'm going to even punch more. Yes. Uppercut. But when we are done, you will know that that man loves me. I, I, I guarantee that. If you minister before the Lord um, consistently and there's an emergency in the spirit that needs your attention, what God will do is that he will send you a summon. A summon, the organic experience of a summon is when the, a weight, the spiritual weight comes upon your spirit man and you know the only way to find ventilation is to find a place to pray. Now if you joke with those moments, they will cease to come. They will stop coming. 
You know the Holy Ghost? He will come to you. And he will say, Give that money. Quietly. Give that money. And then, he just says, it's just a thought. He won't come again. The next time he will come will be in two years. And they, in two years, it will be fainter. Give that money. Then you reject him again. He won't come again. He will just walk away. Then he will go to Dr. Ekena. Give that money. And then he gives. Next time it will be louder. Gives. Next time it will be louder. Gives. Then, when that is happening through your life regularly, I like using this word sparingly. The reason is because it's not in the Bible. So I don't know what it means. The word, <laughs> the word I'm talking about is breakthrough. It's not in the Bible. So I don't know what the word means, but I assume you will do. So <laughs> this man is responding. This man is obeying. This man is obeying and he's rejoicing in it. God will enlarge your coast. Because he knows that if he wants to reach people, you are the address. No problem. He all those resources will be coming into your life. There is no wizard that can stop it. Especially if he tells you, put it here. You put it. Put it there. You put it. And it is not all he gives you, you ask for. That means you can be building your house. Building, 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 building. It's okay, put this one here. Put, put this one here. So it's in serving him that we save the capacity to prosper. And you, that doesn't want to be a conduit, he will make you a dry land. Have you read the scripture that said, and the rebellious shall dwell in a dry land. He won't force you as a gentleman. He just shows up and say, can you do this? If you are quick to do it, he will come again. What about this? Before he makes that request, he has already seen your condition. And he has an intention to help. So he now comes and puts a burden on you. And you think you're the one helping somebody. You don't know he wants to help you. Then he will not leave you with that thing you refuse to help with. And in a short while, he will be in a dry land. I've been there before. So I know what I'm telling you. I don't want to end up there again. Uh, for in him are ye in Christ Jesus. He might ask you to do something. And uh, when you do the thing, maybe to give out some pounds, what he wants to give you is not pounds. It's to deliver you from death. If you know him, you will know where to look. And he will tell you when to take your journey. The Bible reveals that it is impossible for a man to order his steps by his wisdom. It is not given to you to do that. Someone else will have to do that. I pray he gives us understanding. In the name of Jesus. If someone can come in form of you praying, if someone can come in form of something you need to do now. And please, listen to me. It is only spirit that can contact spirit. It is only your spirit that can contact. You can't contact God with your mind. But if your spirit has contacted God, your mind can benefit from it because the energy that comes through your spirit man can compel your mind in an invitation that is like a summon when the Bible says, come, let us reason together. That's a summon. It summons your mind and your mind receives the grace to be able to think the thoughts of God. If the things of God are known by the spirit of God, and that spirit of God is mingled with my spirit to form a new administrative system. It means I'm supposed to operate by the knowledge of God. I'm supposed to operate, therefore, by the wisdom of God. I'm supposed to operate by the ability of God. And if that is not the case, I don't know God. So even though I have the potential to operate maximally according to grace, I'm still operating from the operating system of the flesh. And that's not God's fault. So it is possible for God to have a mighty dream about your life, but you are the 1989 model of yourself. That's not God's fault. You don't you 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 believe that you can get by without understanding how God wants to help you and then still receive help. And that's why wisdom went to the street and began to cry. <laughs> wisdom went to the street and was crying, saying, Hey, how are you even surviving? Because I'm, I'm supposed to be the, the, the instrumentality by which you survive. You have found a way of surviving without me. You cry in the street. Wisdom. So you found another way to survive. And that's why you have not yet felt that wisdom was necessary. So wisdom is still crying till this time. There is only one way God will solve all of man's problems. One way. It's through the office of the Christ. That's the only way. All of your problems. Oh, you want... Yeah, meanwhile, are you with me? Okay, I know you don't believe me. So 
let me show you. Don't, don't worry. I want, to, I want to bring you back home before we start this journey. I want you to be convinced. There's, God doesn't have two ways of solving your problem. He has one way and one way only. So, because of the administration of the main goal spirit, you are supposed to operate. You can access the knowledge of God. You can operate by the wisdom of God. You can operate by the ability of God. So that's the idea of man. God created a, a creature and gave that creature the privilege to be able to operate by him. In the natural, they see you as man, but you are operating with all of the powers of God. That's what glory is. Glory. Glory. The currency of God operates through your vessel. Your own existence is, is different from mortal existence because you are running on an operating system that is beyond the capacity of a man because of this arrangement. You have access to such a possibility. Are you following? There's only way, one way God will solve your problem. So I need to show you that way. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, that's, you, will see, you will see it clearly there before we start the journey for this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. Don't forget, don't forget the last scripture that we read. It said, but of him. Okay, can you replace... Where that him is, can you put the father there? Of the father are ye. You are the father. That's a good place to say amen. Yeah. And listen, but even though you are the father, there is a place that God puts you in order to deal with all of your affairs. There's an ecosystem that he puts you. So, of the father are ye, but you are domiciled in Christ. That's the context. That's the location. That's the, the, the ecosystem that he puts you. It is in that ecosystem that he's going to manage you. Are you with me? So of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Put you in Christ Jesus. And I've told you that anytime you study your Bible and you see Christ Jesus, it's different from Jesus Christ and it's different from Christ. When you see Christ Jesus, he's talking about his office. How many of you still remember the, the, the great confession of Peter? When he responded to the question, who do you say that I am? Peter came up with two, two, two things. There were two things that were embedded in his statement. The first thing was, thou art the Christ. He revealed his office. That's his ministry. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That was the son of the living God. He revealed his personality. So, person and office. And that office is exclusively for him. It's not an office that we co cooperate with him. He operates it exclusively. So, it's not as if someone is prime minister today, another person can be prime minister tomorrow. That is not, it's an eternal excellence. You don't understand? There's no election. May the Lord give you understand. You get that? So, it was his office and his person that Peter revealed. So, when you find Christ Jesus, Christ, so the, the emphasis is the office. So where God puts you is under the influence of a certain office that exists in the spirit. The currency that this office operates with is what we call the anointing or grace. That's the currency that drives every activity that is committed to that office. Oh, you're not with me. Now, if we don't get these basics, there's no need for me to start today's lecture. We'll just stay here for this morning. No need to start this lecture. The currency you need to be empowered. 25 years of my life was used to study what I'm teaching you. Yes. I've been in the cave for 25 years under the discipline of God and he will not allow me to do what I want. I had an opportunity to pastor in Canada and to me it was a great, he said, young man, you go sit down, you go sit down, you go just sit down. I had my own plans and then after struggling, I struggled for like four or five years then I now submitted for the school. I didn't know it would take so long. Um, what I'm telling you, I've seen it. This one I'm telling you. It's not something that somebody told me. I, I know this experientially. So I'm using, I'm looking for text, text to type it out for you. But I know it experientially. But if you know, if you know something experientially, to say it, you will, it, the Holy Ghost will lead you to the scriptures that will lend themselves to you to describe what you are experiencing. That's, that, that's the way preaching should be. Not that you, you take a concordance and you take a commentary, a historical book. Hallelujah. You take a, a history book, take history lessons, and then you will be ministering to people's mind. And the, the issues of their life are not mental. After five years, the people will know you can't help them. It takes five years to know if your help is within range. <laughs> After five years, people will be so loaded in their brain and they will discover that when they are in trouble, what is in their brain doesn't come to their rescue. It is only what is in your heart that rises up to the occasion. So anything that has not affected your heart cannot change your life. Cannot. Now, 
in the book of Matthew chapter 16 that I asked you to open that time, if you begin to read from verse 13, you will see that Jesus had some meetings and all of that, and then they were now traveling. And the way they were traveling was as if they were traveling on foot. And they traveled from eastern Israel to western Israel. And Jesus didn't say anything. The moment they came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus now said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? This was the Jesus that was not concerned about what people felt about him. Suddenly, now, asking what, how people per perceived him, who do men say that he was? And when all the answers came from the questionnaire that he administered, some say you are Elijah, some say you are Jeremiah, some others say you are John the Baptist that is come from the dead. Then I knew why Jesus was asking the question. In his intercourse with the father early that morning, the father had revealed to him that there was someone unto whom he had disclosed his identity. So Jesus said, I'll find out. Who do men say I am? When the answers came from the diaspora, he knew that the person that found out was not outside. So he now rephrased the, the sample space of the questionnaire was, was, was adjusted. He said, who do you say that I am? And then Simon Peter came and brought the great confession. And the great confession is so great that anywhere this confession is not, the church is not. He said, thou art the Christ. Thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, O Simon, but Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, thou art heaven. So it was a revelation of Jesus Christ that brought him into an understanding of his own personal identity. So if you have not seen Jesus, you don't know yourself. Jesus prophesied to them and said, oh, you, you are Simon. And Simon is actually a weed that is by the seashore that is tossed to and fro by the waves. He doesn't have, he doesn't have a, a true stem. So that's inconsistency and all of that. The, the next time, after Jesus gave him this name, the next time he called him Simon was after he, he, he denied him. He said, Simon, Simon. Because he had gone back to being a weed. <laughs> and I say unto you, thou art Kephas. You are the stone. You are going to be in a company of stones. Just like Caesarea Philippi. It was named Caesarea Philippi because of Philip the Tetrarch. Philip the Tetrarch was a civil engineer. And when he was made Tetrarch over that city, he began to build the city, gave it a first facelift. As at the time they came into Caesarea, you will see blocks here, cement here, iron rods here. So everything in the environment was making building. That's when he started saying, uh, because he had something in mind. Because Jesus would never have disclosed the revelation of the church if someone didn't know the revelation of the Christ. It's when he picked it up. I said, okay, I have, I have a story for you. You are Kephas. And upon this Petra, this revelation that you came with, I will build my church. And what will happen? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against. That's where I'm going. The gates of hell. The authorities of hell. Because there are three metaphors you need to know. Gates, windows, and doors. Gates refer to authorities. Windows refers to blessings. And doors refer to opportunities. You will hear someone like Paul says, a great door and an effectual is opened unto us, but there are many adversaries. The opportunity to preach the gospel had opened. But not without limitations and warfares and battles. If you are still here, say amen. He said, I will build my church. Just like Philip the Tetrarch is the engineer of Caesarea, I'm also an engineer. And I'm building, I'm working on a job. And you are a stone, like many other stones that I will fit together to form a priesthood. That's why you will, you will notice that it was Peter that came up with the revelation that we are lively stones. He now understood the concept that Jesus was trying to sell to him. We are built up into a spiritual house, a priesthood. Are you with me? So, they, so that we can offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God, acceptable unto God through Jesus Christ. Listen, it is when the church understands what I just taught you this morning about the Christ. You see, if your life is built on it, because your life can be built on something else. If your life is built on Christ, what your existence will be like is that you are leaning on Christ. Leaning on him. Before I came here to preach to you, I leaned on him. Showed him how insufficient. Reminded him that I'm a stammerer. I can't talk. We are PhD holders. Scholastic people. So what do I have to tell them? Schooled in Cambridge, Oxford. The, the name of the university that I schooled in is not, is not available. <laughs> it's not available. It's, it's, it's. So how do you go and engage these people? You need to help me. See, I leaned. Then he assures me that you have more than help. Then when you, when you see me ministering, you will think, wow, such a scholar. You don't, you don't know. It's help. Help. And I will never allow you to see me without help. I will never. It's a promise. <laughs> you will never, because you won't like it. To live based on our revelation of the fact that he is he, he, built up on our inside to be our help, and we live by that help. Suddenly, you realize that the authorities of hell will no longer be able to prevail against you because you have found the secret of living, which is seeking help from the spirit, and that's how you live. When, when the knowledge of the Christ that happens to be your foundation 
is revealed and how that God expects you to live from the resources that comes through that administrative office and you are living that way the authorities of Hades will not have influence over you. That's what Jesus said. So the question is this. Are you, you, are you getting it? That's what he said. So the acid test of whether it is Jesus building, because if it's Jesus building, he will build on that petra. So one of my commitments in ministry is that I will not waste people's time. Because as long as you keep ministering to their head, they are wasting their time. They are on the same spot. If they don't find out the modus operandi of this system that God has put in place, there is no other way God can help them. And time will reveal that they wasted time. Are you with me? Okay. Now the Bible says of the father are ye. And the father decided to domicile you in an ecosystem. The ecosystem is Christ. That place where things happen by grace. That place where things are funded by the anointing. They are funded by grace. They are funded by the anointing. It is because of this throne that Jesus occupies. Are you here? It is because of this ministry that he occupies in the spirit that the Bible reveals that grace is administered by a throne. It's an office in the realm. That's where you find what you need. And the, the effect of grace is that it, it administers help. And help happens to be what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do to you to take care of infirmities. So the Holy Spirit does what he does to take care of your infirmities through grace. Are you with me? And the source of grace is this office under which he has placed you. Is that clear? Now, so this is it. If you still remember the time that Jesus did an introduction about the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost, I'm going to leave, the Holy Ghost is going to come. He was trying to help us do understand the actor that will be coming to the stage. Right? And he revealed that the Holy Ghost was neutral. That means he will not speak of himself. Did you, did you check that out? He's neutral. Why? Is it that he can't speak? He has his own mind. You must have read about the mind of the Spirit. He has his own mind. He has his own will. For the gifts of the Spirit are given are according as God wills. So why is it that the Holy Spirit, when he shows up, he will not speak of himself? You know why? It's not because he doesn't know how to speak. It's because in the capacity in which he has come is a capacity to create access in your vessel to the office of the Christ. So everything he does is like a PA system. It's what the Christ is doing, he makes available. So he's the one that occupies the office of the Christ in, in, in his branch, in the branch of your own heart. To bring the influence of the government of that Christ into your own space. So he operates as, as, as he provides infrastructure to, to bring the operations in that administrative office right to your heart. And that is why he's neutral. That is why he operates as, by providing an infrastructure. It's not because he doesn't have what to say. That's where he put you. That's the only place where he can manage you. You can decide to create another place, maybe the flesh. He said, This is what I want. Can't I choose? You can't choose. You are too small. It is his that is the power. It is his that is the kingdom. So he decides. It's too late to attempt to choose. And that's why we need to migrate. Spent many years. I went to Bible school early. You know? Very, very early. There. And when I was in Bible school, they felt I was an intelligent student. When God, the Holy Spirit wanted to teach me, the first instruction he gave was that I should throw my Bible school notes away. Well, if he doesn't give you the same instruction, it may not be applicable. I'm just telling you my own story. And my story is not the Bible. You know, it's possible for somebody to exalt his own personal experience and say, this, this is how you should. You, you, have, you are lost. Your small mind has corrupted what God wants to do. Has corrupted it. They say, pack all these things, throw them away first. When you have thrown them away, without hope of recovering them, then we'll begin gradually. That was when I studied and I discovered the, the thread of divine revelation from Genesis to Revelation happens to be Christ and his kingdom. I didn't know that. That's the thread. It's the revelation of a person. I know you don't believe me, so <laughs> I may need to show you a few scriptures. He said, you search the scriptures and you think in them you have eternal life. But these are they that speak concerning me. So the subject of the scripture is about this immortal personality that, that, that operates an office in the spirit. It's on the strength of the resources of the things he paid for and the things he prayed for that the entire scope of the purposes of God can be accomplished upon the face of the earth. He sits in the capacity of an administrator. He's the one that administers your destiny, your purpose in God. He administers it. If you ever know what you were created to be and who, what you were created to do and who you were created to be, it is because you heard his voice. He's the only one that can reveal it. Just like Jesus said, there's nobody that knows me. So this revelation you have, the source is my father. If you ever find yourself, it's because you met him. Such a person that doesn't need to advertise, you know, he said, if you ever come to the Father, you came by me. So I, will, I don't need to advertise. When you walk in the wilderness long enough and you want to trace your Father, you will need to reconcile with me. Be 
people say, high office in the spirit. Your life is in darkness if you don't know it. This is where he put you. This place he put you, and this Christ, under whose administration you have been placed. He said, God has made him wisdom to you. You're not here. It means you don't have wisdom. Oh, oh, okay. Let me correct myself. You have the wisdom of man. And the wisdom of man is so insufficient, you soon find out. The wisdom of man is what is responsible for the illumination of this place. All right? But you cannot give hearing to the ears that are deaf. You can't give sight to the blind. You cannot raise the dead. Even in the heart of uh, the pinnacle of medical care that is available here, there are still cases where doctors will say, you know, we can't help you. It means even the wisdom of devils, demons, has a limitation. And that's why the book of Daniel was written. The king dreamt and he forgot his dream and requested that his dream should be downloaded and the interpretation should be given. And then suddenly the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans discovered there was a, limi there was a limitation on their craft. The magicians suddenly discovered that they were not operating from the height of possibilities that exist. They say, this kind of wisdom only dwells with the gods that are holy. And unfortunately, those gods do not dwell with men. But it means that it's beyond the scope that we know. But we know where it is. But unfortunately for you, king, they don't dwell with men. We need to travel to them. And there's no vehicle through which we can reach that chamber. That was why when, when Daniel came and downloaded those dimensions, the king bowed to him. That means the king acknowledged that he was dead. And when they were asking Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to bow to the image, Daniel wasn't asked to bow, even though he was dead. Wasn't asked to bow. So even the wisdom of darkness has lived. And the Bible says that this Christ, God has made him. Do you know what it means to make? Fashioned him. It was deliberate. He made it such that he would be wisdom to you. He made it such that he would be righteousness to you. He made it such that he would be sanctification to you. He made it such that it would be redemption to you. And that list is not exclusive. It's not, it's not, it's not conclusive. Sorry, it's not conclusive. Because you hear the psalmist say that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? That the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Have you heard of the Lord is my shepherd? That is a genuine definition of prosperity. Following the shepherd. The good shepherd will lead you to where pastor is. If you have any formula for prosperity that is different from following the Lord, hearing his voice, if you have any other formula, you got it from this age. That means you are using the principles of mammon to prosper. And mammon is going to possess your soul. So when we teach prosperity, we need to sit down and know what prosperity is from God's perspective. And meanwhile, I'm not here to preach prosperity. It's not exhaustive. So now, I want to answer the question that is on your mind. The way God solves all of man's problems is through this administration. He shows you something more about this administration. And when you see it, you receive supply. When you see it, you receive help. When you see it, you receive what it takes to mount up with wings like eagles. If the devil is at work, he will make you never see it. For the Bible reveals that if our gospel be hid, it is hidden unto them that are lost. And one of the first things that Jesus had to do to his disciples in the book of Luke, chapter 24, in order for them to even understand the scriptures, it was like a surgery he did to break the seal. And the Bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. So if the devil wants to play a quick one on you, what he does is that he closes your eyes. You don't see that that's the source, that is the circumference, that is the extent, and that is the limit. If God moves, he moves there. And the good thing is that this administration is supported by the framework that the Holy Spirit provides. And the same Holy Spirit happens to be mingled with your spirit. Mingle. Mingle. 